This video is going to be about volume. First of all, let's define volume. Volume is the amount of three-dimensional space that an object occupies, it takes up itself, or you can also think of it as how much space um, it can hold. Some people say a synonym for volume is capacity. How much can it hold? Um, we want to remember that volume is measured in cubic units. So for example, inches cubed to the third power. Since it is a three-dimensional measurement, right? the units are to the third power. If you look at your formula chart, you're going to see three main types of volume formulas. Uh, the first one is for prisms and cylinders. Drew a little sketch there for you. And the formula looks like this, V equals capital BH. So I want to remind you of a couple of things. That capital B is the area of the base. Whatever shape the base is, you need to find its area. Then the H does refer to height, but you need to remember that it's the height of the prism or the cylinder. Right? The H would be, if this is the base down here, right? the H would be this distance here. Our cylinder, right? there is our H. Even if the cylinder is turned on its side, the distance between those bases is the height of that cylinder. So that's what needs to go here. You need to make sure that you're talking about the height of the prism or the cylinder. When we look at pyramids and cones, it looks really similar. The volume is one-third of, again, the area of the base times the height of the pyramid or the cone. And last but not least, spheres. I did not try to draw a sphere here. It wouldn't look very good. But the volume formula for a sphere is four-thirds pi radius cubed. So because we know exponents come before multiplication, you're going to have to do the radius to the third power before you multiply it by four-thirds and by pi. Let's do some examples. So example one here, if we take a look, I hope you can tell what shape that is. That is a triangular prism. I've laid out all of the measurements for you, and if we want to find the volume of the shape, we're going to need to remember that for a prism, the volume formula is capital B, base, area of the base, times H for height of the prism. So I need to find the area of the base shape, the area of this triangle. So I might have to do some work to do that. The area of a triangle is one half base times height. Notice I've got base and height here and I've got base and height here. This is where it can get really confusing. This is for the area of my triangle. So I'm talking about the base and the height of the triangle. So one half times when I look at this triangle, I see it's been marked with a right angle. So my two sides that make that right angle can be my base and my height. Doesn't matter which one is which. So five centimeters and 12 centimeters can be my base and my height. And one half times that 60. So 30 centimeters squared gives me the area of the base. Now I can fill that in for the area of the base in my volume formula. I have 30 square centimeters as the area of the base times height. What is the height of this prism? Don't fall for the 5 and the 12. Don't fall for this tiny little 2.5 that I drew in back here. That is the height of the triangular base. The height of the prism is the distance between the bases. It's this 15 centimeters right there. So the volume is going to be 30 times 15, which is 450. And then I need to put the correct units, since my measurements are in centimeters. It's cubic centimeters, or centimeters cubed. You can also say it that way. Let's take a look at example two. So what shape is this? Hopefully you can tell from my drawing that it is a cone. And I know that the volume of a cone is 1 third times the area of the base times the height. Again, to calculate the area of the base, I might have to do a little bit of work first. This cone has a circular base. So the area of the base is going to be found by finding the area of the circle, pi r squared. So I'd have to do pi times 4 squared, which we know is 16. So the area of this base is 16 pi. For now, let's leave it in exact form. You could always grab a calculator and do the decimal later if you wanted to. So now I can fill that in for my capital B base. One third times 16 pi 
times my height of 12. Now I need to move all those numbers up to the front to multiply them together. It might make it a little bit easier. Um, and it's definitely going to make it easier if I put the 12 by that 1 -third, because I can take 1 -third of 12. 1 -third of 12 is 4. 4 times 16 is 64. So I have 64 pi as my exact value. And again, I need cubic units, cubic centimeters. All right, how about we do example three now? A globe with a diameter of 20 inches. So when you're drawing a three-dimensional object like a sphere, um, it can be kind of hard because otherwise it might just look like a circle unless I do something. So what they do is they put this part in. It's called the great circle. It's like if I cut my sphere in half, what I would be looking at uh, to kind of indicate and help give this some three-dimensional look in the drawing. And the diameter is 20 inches. So the formula is four-thirds pi r cubed. Well, they tell me the diameter is 20 inches. I need to do a little work, not too much work, to figure out that the radius is 10. So four-thirds times pi times 10 to the third power. And again, exponents come before multiplying. So I'm going to have to do 10 to the third power before I multiply by anything else. That's 1,000. My numbers need to come up front so I can multiply them together. And 4 thirds times 1,000 really just becomes 4,000 over 3 times pi. You can change that if you want to into a mixed number, but ew, why would you? 4,000 over 3 times pi is probably the easiest way to leave it. Last, I need units. Since this is volume, it needs to be cubic units. Your first set of do now problems, I'm trying to get the measurements there on screen. I want you to pause the video and find the volume of these two shapes. Uh, I don't know if you can read this right here. This is the diameter drawn in and that says two feet. So use that to help you figure this out. All right, so let's find the volume of these shapes. The volume of a cylinder is again, area of the base times the height. So I need the area of this circular base do a little work off to the side. I need pi r squared. What is the radius of this? Since the diameter is 2, my radius is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 times pi is just pi. So the area of the base is pi. Now I need to multiply that times the height of the prism. What's the height, excuse me, of the cylinder? What is the height of the cylinder? It's just 1.5. We can see that 1.5 foot distance between my bases. So the answer to this didn't take very long at all. 1.5 pi, and again I need my units, cubic feet. 1.5 pi cubic feet, that's a three. Uh, now I've got the shape over here. I hope you saw all my little markings to show you that the base was a square. So when I come here and I use my 1 third, capital B-H, area uh, volume formula for the volume of my pyramid. I know to find the area of the base, it's just a square. So I just have to do five squared, which is 25. So the volume is gonna be one third times 25 times the height, which I've indicated over here is 12. So I need to multiply these together. It's gonna be easier for me to figure out one third of 12 first. So I'm gonna rearrange my numbers. One third of 12 is again four. I seem, to keep like use, I, I seem to like using those numbers over and over again. So 1 third of 12 is 4 times 25. That is 100 meters cubed. Last but not least, I'm going to give you two more do now problems. The difference is I'm not going to give you the answer in this video. You're going to need to make sure that you carefully show your work and find the answer. And Ms. Huerta and I are going to check your answers as part of our video notes check. If you do not get them right, you will not be getting full credit on your video notes. So take your time, do a good job, and we'll see you in class.